evening and a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us here on the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's, we've got a huge show tonight and it's my pleasure to be part of that tonight. My name is Taunchi Prusat and um, it's, well, I would not be complete without the other half of the Oz Crow Soccer Show presenters. A very, very warm welcome to my co-host extraordinaire, Ante Grabovac. Ante, we've got the uh, Hayduk split um, um, gear on tonight. Um, let me just uh, have a <laughs> nice hot tea. Hot tea. I love it. We I are love very, it. very, we're celebrating one of the greatest achievements um, by certainly a junior club side, um, and indeed a club side, a Croatian club side, certainly since um, independence. Wasn't the result we wanted? We certainly wasn't the um, outcome we wanted. But, uh, wasn't the those, performance we wanted either. <laughs> wasn't the performance we wanted a 5 0 drubbing in the yeah. UEFA Youth Champions League um, to AZ Alkmaar? But look, Hayduk Split did very well. They united a, a nation. And, you know, when, when Dinamo Zagreb, the club, wishes um, Hayduk all the very best, and not only that, assists them to get to the final by providing valuable footage of their semi final opponents, AC Milan. And Hayduk reciprocates it with um, Odsrtsa or something like that. Man, I don't cry often, but that brought me to tears. I'll tell you what, that post. Yeah, and it was fantastic to see the crowd. The crowd were cheering. Like they were behind Hayduk from start to finish, even when we were 5-0 yeah. down. We had yeah. we had a lot of the Swiss people, obviously Swiss Swiss Croats, um, cheering on for Hayduk. But, of course, a lot of people flew over from Croatia as well to cheer on Hayduk. It was fantastic. The stands... We're absolutely chocker with Hayduk fans. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, the boys couldn't deliver this morning. No. And un um, a side note to that, I guess, is is the Australian-Croatian connection. Um, I always say this kid nine months ago was playing in front of 200, 300 supporters, fans, um, in um, in outer, outer semi-rural surrounds, if you like, of Elko Park down in Geelong. And today, Noah Skorka was playing in the U UEFA Champions League final. Um, um, you, you, it's, it's an amazing story, an incredible story, and it gives a lot of young people, young Australian Croatians, but also players of, of um, from various Australian Croatian clubs, great, great inspiration that they too can, um, you know, follow in his footsteps and one day play in Croatia. Now, Ante, speaking of playing in Croatia, last week we had an Australian Croatian under 14 select side that take, took part in a um, in a it was the 19th annual tournament of Croatian defenders in Vukovar. Um, their performance look. Let, let's put that aside the, um, because it was a team that was cobbled together very very quickly, and in in some cases they only met each other um, a day or two before the tournament actually started. But tonight. We've got the two co-coaches that are going to come on this show, and they'll tell us all about their experiences in Croatia um, and also some of their, well, um, maybe their plans. They might even reveal some plans for the future. We've got some big, big, big kind of, well, not announcements, but certainly some uh, lots of new information that's going to um, surface. But who are we talking about? Which two gentlemen are, are going to be our guests tonight? Uh, Tornchi, we're talking about Josip Lončaric and Petar Marković, who, of course, um, went over with the teams and, um, the, you know, they were co the coaches there and, and helped the teams along. And, yeah, they've, they've got stories to tell and, you know, uh, I'm sure that they'll fill us in on what happened over in Bukovar with the boys. Yeah, Josip Lončaric from Melbourne, Petar Marković, Marković from Sydney, both legends within their respective Croatian communities and having played with uh, Melbourne Knights, St. Albans in Josip's case, and um, Sydney, Croatia, Sydney United in Petar's case. Uh, we've got heaps to get through, folks. Stay with us. We're going to have a quick um, break, and then after that, it's the News Desk with Arnted. Don't go away, folks. No. Yes, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the News Desk. Let's start in Tassie this week, like we did last week, where Glenorchy got away with a 1-0 victory over the Kingsborough Lions, and Glenorchy are in second position, currently down in Tassie, 
And this weekend, they've got a big Australia Cup match away to South Hobart at the Darcy Street ground. So let's hope that Glenorchy can get the victory there in the Australia Cup. Moving over to MPL Victoria, round 10. The Melbourne Knights led 3-0 and let Green Gully in with a couple of late goals, but fully in control. The Melbourne Knights sitting pretty in fourth position at the moment in the MPL in Victoria. North Geelong had a 1-0 draw with Heidelberg United, which is encouraging after a poor run of results. So uh, well done to North Geelong. Still at the foot of the ladder, but hopefully we'll be able to climb up. And as we've mentioned a couple of times, we've got a very young squad there and a couple of injuries there. So hopefully they will be able to climb up. And unfortunately, St. Albans uh, lost 4-0 to Avondale and they are sitting 12th on the ladder currently. So um, hopefully those two will be able to improve their positions. Yeah, big, big, I was going to say a big game coming up um, this weekend, this Saturday. It's a big Croatian derby. Dinamo playing um, North Geelong uh, to, at Elko Park. That's a do or die game for both. Do or die game for both. There's going to be live music afterwards. There's going to be lots of festivities on the day. But I tell you what, <laughs> when that whistle blows to signify the start of the game, there will be no friends. It will be no holds barred because both North Geelong and um, St. Albans Dynamo both need a, a win bad, I think. And, you know, look, if we go back to that ladder, um, you know, three points separates those two. Dynamo are just outside of the relegation zone by one point. Um, they need to, a point. To, they need some points to get away. They've, they're really in a real slump, St. Albans Dynamo, um, and they're big supporters of this show, and we certainly don't want any of the Croatian clubs to be struggling, but... In particular, a club like St. Albans Dinamo, which is such a good community club. But uh, North Geelong as well, like at the moment, as you said, very encouraging on the weekend. Um, and this game will be streamed live, as are all the NPL Victoria games and all the NPL games around Australia. So, yeah, if you can't get to the game, make sure to uh, tune in because uh, yours truly might be commentating that particular game. So, uh, yeah, look forward to your company on Saturday. We want to hear your dulcet tones, Taunty, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> moving on, moving along. <laughs> in MPL 2 in Victoria, another team that we want to see up in MPL 1 is Dandenong City. So we have the four Croatian teams in the top league in Victoria. They're sitting pretty in third with a good run of results lately, and they thrashed Kingston City 3 0 on the weekend. And so uh, they have four points off top place at this particular point in time. As Taunchi mentioned, we've got the big derby coming up this weekend between North Geelong at home against St. Albans. And we've also got the Melbourne Knights at home this Sunday, 4 p.m. kickoff against Hume City. And we also have on Friday, uh, Dandenong are away to North Coast City. So, um, so yeah, get out there and, and, and support the teams there, and particularly in that Croatian derby in North Geelong. Oh, by the way, you also, um, by the way, Ant, I forgot to say, if, um, if you're... Uh, if you didn't catch Sunday's Football Out West show, there was an interview there with Nick Tolios, the cap, um, the coach of Dandenong City. And um, they are. They are looking good. They're really coming. If things are starting to come together, definitely worth catching that interview on YouTube or Facebook, um, one of our sister uh, podcast programs. So, uh, yeah, definitely tune into that if you can. Absolutely. It was a great show. Taunchy, I was tuned in. Uh, moving down to Capital Football, Canberra, Croatia, unfortunately lost by two goals to three against the Kings. This was like a 98-minute winner by the Kings. And O'Connor Knights did the job with a big 5-1 win over Tuggeranong. And that was their first win of the season. The two Croatian clubs are sitting fifth and sixth in the eight-team league in capital football. This weekend on Sunday, Canberra, Croatia at home against West Canberra Wanderers with a 3 p.m. kickoff, and on Saturday, 3 p.m. versus Monaro Panthers, O'Connor at home as well. So get on down and support your Croatian clubs Saturday and Sunday football in Canberra. Fantastic. Absolutely. Wollongong, <laughs> Sydney, uh, South Coast United. Yeah, unfortunately, they had a 2-1 loss to Port Kembla, and they are sitting second last at this particular point in time. And this weekend, they are at home to Wollongong United, 2.30 p.m. kickoff on Saturday at Ian McLennan Park. So get on down and support there if you're in the gong. Moving up to New South Wales Premier League MPL 2, which is where Hersel Zagreb sit, and they had a fantastic 2-1 victory against Fraser Park. They turned it on in this particular match, and um, they now are sitting mid-table, which is in eighth position. They actually jumped four positions by winning this match. 
So it was a six pointer in the classics, as they call Yay. it. This weekend, they are at home, 7 p.m. kickoff against Sydney University, who they lost to in the Australia Cup. So hopefully they'll get revenge on Sydney University there. Sunday at Sydney United Sports Centre. Jeez, it could have, should have, would have been a win, but uh, we hit the post. Their keeper made a miraculous save. Chris Payne scored two goals. Unfortunately, he, he should have got two more. But um, in the end, it was a two-all draw against Spirit. And Sydney United are currently sitting fourth. And they've got the match this weekend away to the Central Coast Mariners youth team. 3 p.m. in Pluon Park if you're travelling over to the Central Coast um, this weekend. And Patrick Antelme has unfortunately broken his toe. So, um, oh, the, yeah, that was a training incident. So let's hope that he will be back on the field uh, very soon. Uh, Gold Coast Knights 2 defeated Brisbane Raw Youth 1 and Gold Coast Knights are sitting 4th this weekend. They're away uh, to Peninsula Power at AJ Kelly Park. And thanks to Sydney, uh, South Coast United actually tuning in and, and they're uh, giving us the updates. So that's fantastic. Play Wollongong United on May 6th. So there you go. We've got the information there. Uh, in Adelaide, we've got Adelaide Croatia. They w went down 2 goals to 3 to Adelaide Victory. And today they played as well, and they had a two-all draw against Eastern United. So they were busy this particular Anzac Day weekend. And Adelaide Croatia currently sitting second, and they really want to sit first because they want to get up for promotion. Um, so, yeah, let's hope that they can do that. Um, very, Is very it top two or top one that gets promoted, Auntie, in this, this division? Do we know? Let's get someone from Adelaide Croatia on so they can explain yeah. to us what goes on down there. Next game, this Saturday... April 29, 3 p.m. kickoff against Eastern United. So let's hope they get another win. And, um, yeah, we want them back up in the first division. Absolutely. On on paper, you'd expect that to be an easy result, but you never, never know. You never, never know. Form form can sometimes go out the window. Uh, over exactly. to the West, mate. Over to the West. Uh, they had a break for Australia Cup, and we'll just talk about that in the next um, few minutes. But this weekend, Western Knights are away to Gosnell City at Walter Padbury Reserve. That's on Saturday at 3 p.m. And on Saturday at 3 p.m., uh, Gwellop are at home to Fremantle City at the Croatian Sports Centre. And Tony Chavat says it's the top two over in South Australia. The expert on South Australian football has um, come through for us once again. Over to the Australia Cup, the Western Knights, unfortunately, they're on top of the table, but they lost to Mandura City by two goals to one. And in the classic, you know, the cup always delivers a classic. Oh, yeah. Well, at Croatia, were down two goals to nil. And Charlie Breen came off the bench and actually scored four goals. And uh, in extra time, Gwellop were able to do the business and beat Armadale by four goals to two. So terrific stuff, Gwellop. Very, very well done there. And as you can see, there are still nine Croatian clubs uh, alive in the Australia Cup at this particular point in time. And tomorrow night, we've got an Australia Cup match, which is Sydney United hosting Hakoa Sydney City. That is a 7.30 p.m. kickoff at the Sydney United Sports Centre. So get on down there and support Sydney United in their quest to get to the final like they did last year. Um, wouldn't, it be, weekend, aren't it, wouldn't it be well, wouldn't it be good if somehow, somehow, by some uh, twist of coincidence or whatever, we had two Croatian clubs in the final? Wouldn't that be good? Of the, uh, you know, one can wish, one can always wish, but it'll be. Um, I, I just, yeah. At least if we can't have two, at least have one. That's for sure. But um, yeah, all you we'll see is we're hoping say, for that in the NSL days, and uh, but it yeah. never happened. When, no, when no, no, Croatia, did... we're doing well. Sydney Croatia didn't, you know, and then uh, vice versa. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it never happened. That's true. Very, That's very true. But, yes, it would be great. It would be fantastic. But, yes, uh, also this weekend, other Australia Cup matches. Sunday, Glenorchy are away um, to South Hobart. Next Tuesday night in uh, against Upfield, we've got Dandenong City at Gibb Reserves. That's 8 p.m. kickoff. And next Tuesday night as well, we've got St. Albans away to Whittlesea United at Mosaic Recruit. Recreation Reserve, so get on down. There's a lot of football happening at this particular point in time, all around Australia with all the Croatian clubs. Yeah, all well, lots and lots of lots and lots of football happening, which is great to see. Um, I know last week in Victoria, the junior leagues kicked off, the local community leagues kicked off as well. 
So the the NPL juniors have been going through thick and fast, but uh, also now we've had so many um, 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 state league women's as well that kicked off as well, um, and and the met, with what they call the metropolitan juniors or the the community juniors as well. So a lot of football action happening around the country. Now let's we're going to quickly turn our attention overseas, um, and it's time for the for the Croatian roundup. Yeah, hundred percent Tornchi. A little bit of a jingle there in between the segments. We're starting to really professionalise things the way we do things, or at least we'd like to think that. By the way, thanks to everyone who's jumped up on the um, in the chat. We'd love to hear from you wherever you are. Where are you tuning in? Um, and it is a bit of an unusual night, Tuesday night tonight. Normally we go on a Wednesday night. Um, it might be a bit of a training night. So no doubt there's, a, there's going to be a kind of a, a less live of viewers. But um, the reason being is obviously tomorrow, Sydney United playing that um, Australia Cup game. Ante, will you be involved? You'll probably be directly involved in that, won't you? Um, I will be in some way. My, my friend who has already made a comment, yeah, we, um, you know, we were going to do something, but unfortunately that's fallen through. Uh, so, yeah, I will be at least ground announcing. So, um, yes, it will be uh, good good up there tomorrow night. And um, everyone, get, particularly if you're in Sydney, you know, get behind the team. Speaking of dulcet tones, if you want to hear the dulcet tones of one, Ante Grabovac, turn up to the Adenzo Park complex <laughs> tomorrow night. Yeah, uh, Let's turn our attention to Croatia now. What's happening over there? Um, it was an interesting round of um, games that was played over the weekend. Um, if we quickly sort of have a look at that. Lokomotiva defeated Šibenik. Šibenik are in the cup final. They're going to take on Hajduk split in Rijeka in, um, end of, um, um, in, in a few weeks' time. But they are struggling, and for the first time this season, they have plummeted to the foot of the ladder. Now, remember, with this ten-team elite um, division competition, the bottom—it's only the bottom side that gets relegated. Now, Gorica—they defeated Rijeka one 0 at home, and as a result, they have leapfrogged leapfrogged Šibenik. And uh, Jelko Sopic, the uh, very enigmatic. Um, Gorica coach, this is the one that after they defeated Shibani two weeks ago, um, called a 1 a.m. training session back in Lika Gorica when they got back to near the nation's capital. I, at one of the press conferences afterwards, they said, you know, um, you know, is it time to celebrate? And this goes, what? We haven't achieved anything yet. You know, this, this, this is just the start. Next week, we've got an even tougher game. So we have to keep on going. We have to keep on going. And um, so it's really, really interesting. Now, Dinamo Zagreb, they drop points again, this time to their bogey side, Istra. Istra um, in Pula held the, the champions-elect, let's call them that, to a nil-nil draw. Now, every time Dinamo drops points, Hajduk does the same. It's almost like some sort of solidarity. Um, but this time it wasn't the case. Hajduk split um, ended up defeating Var- Varajdin at home. And... Um, Emir Sahiti was amongst the goals. The, he, this kid is really, really talented. He's been injured. Um, however, he managed to um, come back um, from injury, and that's a good story. That is a good story. Now, we talk about Hayduk's juniors. We'll talk a little bit more about them um, just later in the show. Um, obviously, the um, UEFA junior or youth league exploits. But another youngster made his debut, Nico Sigur, who about – a couple of years ago, was playing street soccer in Canada. And then he, he found his way to Europe, I think, via the Slovenian League and then um, came to Croatia, play, tried and trialed and succeeded in getting with the Croatian junior, um, the Hajduk Split junior team. And now he's made his uh, debut. So um, there's a lot, a lot of bright young talent coming up through the ranks down there at the Paul Yud Stadium. So if we have a look at the um, ladder, Dinamo Zagreb ahead by 10 points. There's still still six rounds to go. Now, mathematically, that means there's 18 points on on on, um, on offer, if you like. Rijeka are in third position. Now, that's the position, aren't it, that leads to European competition. There's still a bit of a bottleneck there. Slaven Belupo, Osijek Varazdin. Osijek just today announced they've got a new coach, Stepan Thomas. Um, former Dinamo Zagreb player. He's now taken the reins of Orsiek, who have not 
recorded a win, I think, since the league's resumed, which is pretty amazing. And then you see down the bottom, Istra, Lokomotiva, Gorica, and Shibunik at the foot of the competition standings. All right, if we move along to the second division, the second division, well, this is an interesting one. Rudesh defeated Bielo Brdo 1-0. Very close game there. Audience 2-0 over Zmiavci. Solin um, destroyed Dubrava Zagreb 4-0. Vukovar defeated Kusto, uh, Hrvatski Dragovoljac 3-1 to maintain their second position there on the competition standings. And Sibalia and Dugopolje fought out a nil all draw. Uh, well, we've got, what, to, I think it's about six rounds to go in this competition as well. At the moment, Rudesh are nine points ahead of Vukovar. Um, and now Rudesh, during the week, actually got a new president, and it is someone very well known to us all, Josip Šimunić, the former Croatian under-19 coach, has now, well, basically, as soon as he was uh, um, given the boot by the Croatian Football Federation as the Croatian under-19s coach, the next day in the Croatian press, it surfaces, he's accepted the role of president at NK Rudesh. Um, we're going to hope to get uh, Josip on the um, show in the coming weeks, which is which is a, an amazing thing. Um, there's not too many players that have been born in Australia, have gone overseas to carve out a uh, playing career, then have moved on to coaching, and then have moved on to um, being president of a club. And Rudesh is no small club, you know, they're... Until they're, they're on top of the second division, they're, um, they've got a very, very good youth development program. And yes, they don't have many supporters, but apart from Dino's more Zagreb, which uh, Zagreb club does have supporters, but the infrastructure that they've got, the setup that they've got, one of uh, uh, Shimonich's very, very good mates, Silvio Maric, is the football operations director. Another one, Fabian Komjenovic. Is, um, is the head of the academy program there. So we're talking about ex-internationals, all, um, you know, A license or whatever the pro license um, uh, accreditation is for the highest of coaches in Europe, in Croatia. That's who runs their program, their, their youth development program, their academy. So it's a fair income club. That's, no, that's um, without a doubt. And I, I think one of the first things that Shimonich actually said when he was interviewed was that he would like to see that in years to come they could actually play first division football out of their 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 ground there in Rudesh, which is in Western Zagreb for those of you that do know where Rudesh is. It's um it's, it's a bit of a cult club that but the facilities aren't the best. If they do end up playing in the first division next year, they'll be ground sharing with Lokomotiva at the Kranchevic Road Stadium. Man, I think that, that, that stadium is going to get very, very overused in uh in in months and years to come but uh yeah a good news story there to to, to finish off the um croatian league roundup yeah it sounds like they're very ambitious yeah now until we're going to take a bit of a break when we return we're going to dissect um what happened this morning in the um final of the uefa youth league and we've also got some footage of us an interview that was um that was held with um, um with um noah scorko the, uh, our very own Australian Croatian um, member of Hajduk Splits under 19 team. Folks, don't go away. It's the Oz Crow Soccer Show, episode 34. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and boutique apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavicekstudio.com.au. Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It is episode 34. And Ante, um, look... 
we, we talked about at the start of the program, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was an amazing achievement, um, Hayduk split getting into the final of the UEFA Champions Youth League or the Youth Champions League. But a couple of things that were really interesting, um, one of them was the fact that UEFA, for the first time in history, I think, actually had to move the venue of, of the final. Um, before, they've always had it, I think, in Neon, in where, where the um, um, UEFA headquarters are. And I think the ground only fits something like 2,000, 3,000 supporters, if that. There's like a small stand, and that's about it. It's really symbolic more than anything else. Amazing, hey? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that speaks volumes of the you know passion of the Tortilla and the Haydook fans that they had to move the stadium and, of course, you know, go to a bigger ground to cater for that support that was huge and and you know they sang from the first minute to the 90th minute even when they look were five nil down it was just incredible the atmosphere that they created obviously supplemented with a lot of um, locals and and people that traveled from split and all over europe so um mm. yeah, it's a big achievement obviously for Haydook to get into that particular final and you know it, it sounds like hopefully the future uh, looks very bright for these players and the, hopefully the the Haydook of, of the future as well yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing that was that I found was quite amazing was just th- some of the publicity that um, that um, a lot of these um, um, what the, the leading up to it was achieving. Uh, if if we have a look at um, some of the, the the press that was happening in um, that Australian Croatians were getting, for example. So sports getting obviously, and off air we were just saying how every time we go to Croatia, this is our favourite newspaper because uh, the stuff, the politics, and all of the crap. You know, um, I love I love the fact that a small country of four million people has got a daily sports newspaper. We here in Australia, with all of our millions, uh, millions and millions of people here, we don't even have a daily sports paper. Um, you know, you had the Sydney Morning Herald, the Daily Telegraph up there, the, the Herald Sun, the, the Age, maybe had 20, 30 sometimes pages of sport, but that was it, you know, and that was usually on a Monday. But this is a... You know, every day, every week, um, 32, 36, 40 pages of sport. And anyway, this is Monday's edition of the Sports Genosti. Um, Heiduk Jelly Svet. Heiduk wants everything. But there's a story on the very, very back, um, um, an interview with uh, Joey Didlitzer from Geelong. And the interviewer asks him, amongst other things, uh, do you know Noah Skorko? <laughs> and he goes, oh, I used to coach Noah Skorko. I mean, um, Josip Skorko are very good friends. And um, interestingly, he goes on and he says, um, us Croatians, we're, 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 very, we're, we're, we're unique, unique in many ways. Um, 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 and it's just, a, it's just a great little story. And um, we'll probably pop this up on our um, Facebook page, um, mi australski hrvati doista smo posebni, pos- pozitivni luđaci, najjači atakav je i noa skoko. Translated says, us Australian Croatians, we are unique, positively crazy, um, the, the most, the hardest, the worst, and um, exactly like that, or one of those is noa skoko. So um, great stuff there. Um, and also, look, um, some of the scenes that, that were happening um like for a minute too short but uh look having said that here we go here we go are we there Uh, play a little bit. There, I'm back, and there we go. There's a little bit of that footage that uh, uh, that people. Some of the.
What happened to you, Taunchy? You left. But oh, yes, I'm back. I'm back. There we are. Over there. Next up, Billy. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm sorry. I'm you seem to be having some match. issues. Yeah. It sounds like you're back. Speaking of the actual match, Vushkovic, it was a dumb yep. penalty just before halftime. It was unnecessary. The ball was going out. It was nil all. We were being outplayed. The Haydock were being outplayed, but gave away an unnecessary penalty. And so they, um, AZ led 1-0 uh, at the break. And then um, Bullion made a lot of crucial saves. He, he, he looks the good, so the, the goalkeeper of Haydock. Um, he, he kept us in the game. And it was actually seven shots to one in the first half. So that was for AZ. So that's how dominant AZ were. Um, on the hour mark, Antunovic, our number nine for Haydok, made a wonderful strike on, on the hour mark. And unfortunately, that was saved. That could have turned the game around and made it one all. Um, they did look a bit better. That first sort of spell of the first 20 minutes of that second half, a couple of counterattacks that where we Haydok looked dangerous. Uh, Noah Skorko, who we've mentioned, he came on the 62nd minute. And then Poku scored in the 70th from outside the box in the 75th. So... The last 20 minutes were an absolute disaster and conceded four goals um, for Hayduk. But, yeah, you know, it was just an unfortunate match that, you know, Hayduk basically, once the wave started, uh, it couldn't be stopped. It was. And that's the thing that you often hear coaches say about young players, the inconsistency. And it's almost, it's a, it's a real confidence thing. I mean, Bushkovich made a mistake that, you know, he's he's played at, he's played in front of big crowds. He's, he's played for the senior team. Um, yet whether it was it nerves or was it something else, it was just or it's just that just that inconsistency that is so typical of of young players, yeah. Um, and and when the heads dropped, the heads dropped, and it was the the other team you could see were just relentless. And AZ Alkmaar, they 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 were a very good club, a very good team. Everyone everyone knows it. And um, it, the thing that really struck me was that they they were ready to punish Hayduk and that they did. Now, after the game, um, one of the uh, reporters or one of the journalists from um, Hayduk Digital TV caught up with our very own Noah Skorko. And, um, and, and we're going to do a bit of a role play, um, aren't we? Because it is in Croatian and it's for the benefit of any of, your, of, any of our viewers who are um, not familiar with Croatian, uh, we're going to... You're going to be Noah Skorko, and I'm going to be Jelko Vela, the interviewer. So uh, we'll put 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 that up, and uh, yeah, we're going to do the uh, translations. So Noah, overall, it was a super season, but in today's final, it could be said we were beaten by a better team. How did you see it? I think they were the better team today, and we gave it our all, but it hurts a lot. You spent some part of the game on the bench and part of it on the field. But it seems to you that did it seem to you though that something could have been changed from the sidelines as it seems they took control from very early in the piece. They were better than us early on and we kept pace with them right up until the penalty. But when they scored the goal, we kind of fell apart a bit and we weren't able to get back into the contest. Is it fair to say the penalty in some ways killed your chances a bit in that last minute of the first half? The penalty killed us. What do you do? It was a bad luck and there was much more we could have done. AZ Alkmaar showed just why they've been able to put three to four goals away against some of Europe's biggest clubs because their two wingers and the attacker that came on really showed that they are ready for senior team football. We saw them against Real Madrid, Barcelona, Sporting Lisbon. They are a top side. My only regret is we couldn't beat them today, but they deserved it. Not to worry. There will be further opportunities down the track. You are one of the younger team members of this squad. You still will be eligible to play in next year's competition, hopefully taking out the title of champions. God willing. Yeah, and if you want to see the original, like there's there's a lot of footage, some great footage, Haydul Digital TV. And uh, look, all of the, all of the, um, not, I won't say all of them, but, but a lot of the Croatian clubs are now really starting to do well as far as their social media, about as far as their own media production. And um, I know Osijek is, is, is another good one. Of course, Dinamo Zagreb, Rijeka as well is another one. But um, they, they provide a lot of exclusive footage, usually behind the scenes, in the dressing rooms and things like that. So it's really good to see some of these clubs in Croatia um, getting with the times. And, and, and that's, a, that's a great interview there with, uh, with Noah Skorko. And he's uh, 
it's really got that uh you know that dalmatian that split ski uh naglasak if you Not, like the accent he's got split, that drool happening split, that dalmatian split, drool split ski north geelong naglasak right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but uh yeah look it's yeah. great to see a lot of people um on the comments section like i said we'd love to know where you are where you're tuning in and um do do drop us a line you know, we've got south south coast united obviously have said something tony chava is there as as uh, usual so uh thanks to everyone that is jumping on board well it's time for our guests we're going to take a quick break when we do return we're going to have uh josip Wonchalic and ante markovic um, hopefully we'll get Ante back because uh, he was ready to put the little kitties to sleep, but uh, I'm sure he'll be back. Folks, don't go away. We're going to be right back straight after this little break with um, the first of our two guests, Josip Lonchadic, and he'll also be joined by Petar Markovic. So don't go away. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and boutique apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavicekstudio.com.au. Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Welcome back to... Uh, oh. There's a little bit of a graphic we're going to get prepared a bit later on. Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It's episode 34. And Ante, as we spoke earlier in the um, in the lead up to the to to the news desk um, last week, was it? In fact, two weeks ago. Or how quickly time flies! An Australian Croatian under 14 select team made up of um, young boys from um, Sydney, Melbourne, and even Geelong took part in a um, in the 19th annual. Uh, tournament of Croatian defenders in Vukovar. It was a very hastily cobbled together team, but um, the experiences that they, uh, um, um, I, I think, experienced the experiences that they experienced over in Croatia um, for a lot of the kids. For in which case, this was a lot of the time was their first time that they'd ever been to Croatia. I'm having trouble getting the words out. Auntie, you take over. <laughs> it's an day. You've been up uh, watching Hayduk. Hey, 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 that's what it is. Absolutely. Umar Anson. Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, it's great. Um, you know, it, it was prestigious for us to be a part of it. Obviously, the, the team that was taken over and obviously uh, representing the Australian and Croatian children. And, you know, they flew over to Vukovar, and I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more about how the team went and what went on down there from um, our special guests, Josip and Petar Markovic as well. Well, one of those two coaches is ready to join us, the one from Melbourne, Josip Lonchadic. Josip, welcome to the show. How are you? And it's uh, good to see your, your smiling face. How are you? I'm good, gentlemen. How are you guys going? Not too bad. How, how about the jet lag? Has it had a, had a chance to sort of uh, subsidize, subside a little bit, has it? As you know, with young children, there's no such thing as jet lag. It's as soon as you get home. <laughs> Get up and then go through the suitcase to see what presents they've got. So no, it was um it was good. It was I mean our flights or well, my flight coincided with um evening in Melbourne, so I kind of got home. It was midnight and then went to bed and there was no real jet lag, so it's all good. Oh, that's the way. Speaking really? of young young children, uh, our other other guest, your co-host co coach, um, Petar Markovic will be joining us very shortly as soon as. Uh, we manage to get uh, he gets manages to get his kids to bed. Um, Matt East says one Wollongong boy in the side. Was there really? Was there, who was from Wollongong? Yeah, look, uh, uh, um, Peter can probably tell you a little bit more about the boys from Sydney. As you sort of said in your intro, um, yeah, the selection was made by the the guys from the HNS during the camp. So I only met the Sydney boys for the first time uh, in Vukovar at the hotel. Um, yeah. Peter obviously met the Melbourne boys at the same at the same time, although there were a few on the flight with us, uh, including your nephew as well. 
um, that were coming from um, from Melbourne and Geelong. So, um, yeah, look, it, as you probably know with these kind of things, yeah. if you're going to go there to compete, you want to spend more time with them. This was mainly for those boys to be exposed to that environment, obviously to the Croatian culture. And as you said as well in your intro, many of them haven't been back before, have never been there before, and, and um, were probably... Probably more uh, in awe of, of, of the nation itself, you know, the culture within the country, the language, obviously, uh, for a lot of them was a bit of a challenge as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, to our generations, probably growing up speaking Croatian at home, maybe not so much anymore. So, yeah, all, all of yeah. those little factors together played a part in their um, in their development. How many yeah, uh, matches did they end up actually? How many matches did they actually end up playing over there, your soup, and, you know, what were the results? So we played three. So the tournament's a 16-team tournament. It's a very uh, proper Croatian tournament. Only the top team goes through in each group. So it's uh, cutthroat. There's no, um, what is it? There's no medals. For <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, the boys, look, we played Osijek in the first game. We lost that one 5-0. Then we played Gorica, who actually made the final. We lost that one 4-0. And to, to continually show the improvement, the third game against Istra, we lost 3-0. So... If we had another three matches there, we were tracking at 2-0, 1-0, and then hopefully a 0-0 draw. But um, the boys had three matches, which for them, considering that the size of the squad was 14 players, one goalkeeper, um, you know, 24 hours of travel, playing 24 hours after arriving, it's more than enough. Um, and you can see the picture of the boys there in the photo. Although, obviously, they were getting better and better as, as it all progressed. So that's that's fantastic. That, that really um, uh, goes a lot. And I think Petr's uh, joined us on, on. Petr, are you there? No, no, he's still not there yet. I thought we thought he was going to join us, but we can see some of the footage there. And look, it must it must the the experiences itself. Like it's it's. I mean, it's an international team. Let's call it that. It's a all right. Obviously, it's a select team, but you know, traveling around on a plane and then um, on buses, going to the hotel, doing all those things that you know professional footballers do. For for a lot of these kids, it's probably the first experience of actually, you know, having that entire professional experience of a, of a footballer um were they were they in awe were they overawed by any of this but by the occasion or did they just take it in their strides i mean most of these kids are what 13 years old 12 13 year olds yeah so the, the hns coaching staff led by um petar Krupa, and they, they identified these boys like i said of the sydney united and the melbourne knights camp um and it just happened so that the players that they identified a large proportion of them were 2010 born so they were also uh, I think seven of the boys or eight of the boys were a year younger than all of the other kids in the competition. And you can see it. Like, there's a size difference. You know, yourselves yeah. working with children um, oh. from one year to another, you see massive differences, especially that pre-puberty stage. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I know the scores will give you one one side of the story, but the other side of it is the boys actually played some beautiful football. Like, they played through the lines, and Kirpan was was commenting on that. And, you know, they tried to play combination. They played out the back the whole time which we know, you know, is going to cost you results in youth football, but it actually gives the kids a chance to show what they know as players. And, yeah. and that's the most important thing for, for the kids in this tournament was actually to see where do they stack up individually, not so much as a team, because as a team, they never worked together prior to the trip. Yeah. 100%. Thank you, Josip, as well. Joining us um, along with Josip on the trip is uh, Sydney United's ex Captain and, uh, you know, still coach of the youth and, uh, you know, all-round great guy, Mr. Petar Markovic. <laughs> Petar, welcome to the show. Well, thanks, man. Brumi, I miss hey, you. Petar, how are you? Legenda, how are you? Very good, very good. I can't complain. I miss I miss my roomie already. I wish I could be back, back in Bukovar <laughs> with your <laughs> He's a good roomie, mate. He's very neat. He's very clean. Malo, malo, <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> all right, let's... Let's keep your bedroom keep stories to your stars, boys. Come on now, you know. The Genia, I'm sure, are tuning in as well and listening or maybe they're just too busy putting the kids to bed while you guys have managed to get out of it. But uh, Petar, um, Josip just spoke how it was for, very hard, very difficult. In in many cases, you just met the Victorian boys um, in Vukovar for the first time and, and Josip was saying he, he did the same thing with the Sydney boys. So um, put, what was the first thing that... You guys, after introducing each other and to each other and shaking hands, what was the first thing that you did? Did you sort of plan a training session or did you plan more of a kind of a team bonding experience? Or, or what did you do? What, I mean, it's, it's such a, 
overwhelming thing. Now you've got a game the next day or whatever the case may be. What do you do as coaches in such a short time? Well, we, we, we actually met for the first time in Doha Airport, which worked well. <laughs> we, we, plan, we, planned our, we planned our seats, seat allocations from uh, Doha to, Vuk- uh, to Zagreb. So we had enough time there to, to go through a bit of detail from what we know from, from our, like my players in Sydney and, and your ship knows the background of the Melbourne boys. So we did a little bit of planning formation work and, and we kept it quite simple and, and basic, you know, we, we uh we didn't butt heads we had the same same process and, and thought process of, of formation we're going to play and and we just we gave the boys as, as little details they needed to it was just it was more so just getting them getting them revved up for it and yeah get too overwhelmed with the occasion and, and being overseas it was just go out there and, and show what you what you're capable of doing and and listening in earlier hearing out your sip it's it's what we tried doing we tried playing out from the back and and our boys, I think, competed well technically, um, but but as Yosip mentioned, physicality uh, was was quite tough because we had a fair bit of boys who were who were underage um, for this tournament. But nevertheless, you know, it's a learning experience for them and and something they you know take away from there and and, and realize what they need to work on and and how to better their game and what to expect if if they do go on this trip next year. Now. It's- Speaking of next year, will it be a case of um, the Croatian Federation again um, or delegates from the Croatian Football Federation um, select these squads or will it be maybe yourself and Josip, if you guys are still involved in it again next year, um, a coaching uh, panel or a co- set of coaches that are going to do the um, select selection process? How's it going to run um, You know, next year, for example? Well, my understanding is that H&S are, are coming out again um, to tour Australia. I'm not sure how many of the selectors will be here, but we'll be. Or I can speak on behalf of myself. I'll be on board to to do the selection process and and run the camps and and learn from from uh, the H&S coaches as well. Because I took a week off work um, just to just to see how they do things, just to better my my coaching um, <clears throat> development and. And I guess we'll we'll just have to come to an agreement of of who's available, and it, it's quite tough because you know there's financial burdens there for for a lot of people. Um, but something we spoke collectively within coaches and and uh, Yore, the president of the Sarves, is you know organising raffle tickets and and uh, Zabavet just to help ease the the, the constraint there because it is it is a you know a, a fair bit of. A burden on parents to to pay such such high high um, fees for yeah. for, it. but it's it's something that you know we'll, I, I personally would like to be a part of in the near future and continue on with that because you know I, I live and breathe football and and I enjoyed the experience. Ante, yeah, absolutely. Petard, um, you mentioned that you picked up a few things. Um, both of you, Josip and Petard, you know you spent. Uh, some time with them, obviously, in January here in Sydney. Now you spent some time with the coaches over there in Bukovat. What have you guys picked up as coaches? And are there any tips and tricks that um, you guys have learnt yourselves? You want to go first, Pete? Let, let Peter go first. Uh, look, it, a, a lot of it was repetitive training sessions. You know, it's 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 not just putting on a session and, and so be it, you know, show the boys once. And it's actually going over it and picking up you know minor minor errors that the boys are doing um and it's just staying on top of it just so they you know are, are fully equipped with it it's it's easy to put on a session but if if you know if boys are, are doing it without any per- real purpose or thought process behind it then you know the, the their technique might be off you know which helps significantly you know you, you want to try and gain one second during any match and, and if that means taking one touch into space to help help your teammates and help yourself get out of trouble, then so be it. Rather than you know taking a wrong touch and, and positioning your body, um, but you know I watched a lot of tr- sessions they put on here. I watched I got to watch a little bit of training sessions in Osijek and Dinamo that they hosted for some of our boys who got the opportunity, and a lot of it was was training drills sessions that we've done here in Sydney, which is pleasing to see. You know you you, you kind of you know football is a very common language i guess and um you know we're exposed to so much so i i think collectively as a club at sydney croatia sydney united i think we're, we're on the right track it's just 
it's just the hours i guess we've got to work on and the and the boys got to do their individual training too to to get better you know now um uh, petar i was going to say before we get to yossi petar um when you were um doing the training sessions or, or overseeing the training sessions at Aussie, they didn't by any chance say hey petar do you want to coach the senior team we're going to get rid of our senior coach here <laughs> i was waiting Anyway, it's like that their third coach this year or something like that. Stepan Thomas now is the new coach, but uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I actually got a I actually got a text message from uh, a good friend of mine, Millie Dinak, who who mentioned that um because he's quite close with him and yeah, it's it's a Oshik's looking quite quite promising. Um, you know they've built a new stadium. They've got about seven fields there for for all their juniors and set up. It's there's good signs coming out of Oshik and. Jeez, I, I, I did bring it up to the missus and <laughs> and whatever. I've got to get her on side. But uh, look, if there's an opportunity there, I'd, mate, I'd, I'd be silly not to take it. Uh, Yossif, now, uh, what was your experiences of what did you what did you take out from the very short, but it seems like a very fruitful trip to Croatia from a coaching perspective. Yeah, I'll just I'll give Peter some advice on that one. Looking at uh, uh, job security in terms of working for Osijek, I don't know if that's the best uh, career move. But um, uh, similar to what Peter said, it's attention to detail. Um, and sometimes, you know, in the process of coaching, sometimes we get held up on how the session looks and, you know, are we hitting this amount of passes, other spaces, right? But it's actually the attention to detail in that youth phase. Um, and even things like that we picked up from the camps that um, Peter and I spoke about, from um, Luka Milanovic, the strength and conditioning coach for the national team, about their posture. You know, little things like they can't squat accurately because they can't straighten their backs out because they're, you know, hunched over screens and all those little behaviours that they're starting yeah. up with kids in Croatia. They saw it was more prevalent in our Australian kids because, well, you know, our kids all have devices, you know, and they're spending more yeah. time uh, in front of them. So that attention to detail to correct things early. Um, and there is... It's not ruthless, but it's quite blunt. Uh, probably, you know, what you'd find with the OSIEC directors in terms of their coaching um, criteria. But it's, it is blunt because they're trying to produce players and they know that what works later on needs to be corrected early enough. So that's the, the biggest thing that we've I've taken from it. And I'm, Pete and I spoke about this over dinner many times over there. They're very is direct, it, it sounds like. Yeah. Boys, I'm, I'm just asking both of you, or either of you answer this question. We're starting to get these real tangible connections with Croatia. And and I had a very brief conversation with Jure Dragovic, the president of the Croatian Soccer Association of Australia today. And he was saying, look, you know, our links now with the Croatian Football Federation are becoming stronger and with Croatian football in general. And they'll only get stronger. Is there ways to explore this newfound connection with Croatian football to really, I don't know, exploit all of its strengths for our clubs here, so that we, you know, the, the Sydney Croatians, the Melbourne Croatians, the Gold Coast Croatians, what you know, that we end up having some sort of an advantage over a lot of the other NPL clubs around Australia because there's a certain way that's being done here in Australia and there's obviously a certain way that's being done at grassroots level in Croatia. Is there some way or some mechanism that you guys see could be implemented in, in maybe not in the next year or two, but maybe in the next five to ten years? To exploit that 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 I don't know uniqueness about Croatian football. Definitely, yeah. Go, go. No, go, Pete. That's all good. No, I I definitely think it's it's a real asset for us in particular. You know, I know I know Melbourne, Croatia, Sydney, Croatia have both applied for the B license, and and we're looking quite promising for that. So it's only going to grow. The, the wheels are in motion. Um, for us to become better and, and a little bit more professional, we, we tr you know we, we try to be as professional as we can. We're not in the in the first league, but the stepping stones are there now. And in terms of the scouts from HNS coming out here, we've you know sp speaking on behalf of Josip and myself, we've got great connections with them, and and you really feel that with with our selectors. It's it's a shame that Australia keeps us, you know, back of back of door, which is a shame because you know Australia's home, but we, we get a lot more love out of, you know, people on the other side of the world as opposed to getting help from our own backyard, which which is a shame because, you know, the amount of talent that's come out of both our clubs and played at international level and overseas, it's a no-brainer why they're just abandoning us <laughs> for whatever reason it is. But, look, we've got avenues to go overseas directly with H&S and, and they've made note they will be returning every year. Um, and it's it's unbelievable. 
if if I was a Croatian kid of a heritage and and um, I heard about this, I, there's, there's no no other place I'd be joining than, than these clubs to to get my foot in the door overseas because you know there's there's just bigger and better things there waiting for us. Josip? Yeah, I think uh, it's it's really opened up the eyes, I think, for a lot of the kids. And, and look, something that Pete and I spoke about as well, it is important for them to learn their language because it's all well and good to sing a few songs back here in Australia at a wedding. But when you go over there and you're trying to even have a dialogue with the referee about a decision, he's not talking to you in English. He just wants, you know, he wants you to speak in Croatian. It's a mark of respect. So if it if it encourages our kids to practice the language at home you know go to croatian schools there's mm-hmm. many ways to learn a language you can get apps now to, to learn languages yeah it's it's a question of how much uh, work ethic is there because if they do make the move overseas and using these pathways as an opportunity to go over there well you, you kind of need to know your language many a toss remote if someone can go you know you're going to go overseas and you're not going to know at least how to converse basically in football terms um, i understand there's dialects and different things but you know everyone can speak some version of our language uh, and that'll only benefit them if they do you know get an opportunity through their football talent to maybe earn themselves a place in one of the academies overseas and, and then relocate over there yeah absolutely i just want to ask due to our geography i mean typically we're training three nights a week um both at, you know, well i definitely know it's here united the kids mm-hmm. i don't know about melbourne Knights. So i would suspect the, uh, that amount as well but what about overseas are they training the same amount they're training more oh, good what are they doing over there it's, a, it's about the same. It's just that most of their spare time, like even we, we saw some, a lot of, there's a lot of those um, uh, futsali type outdoor concrete courts where you'll just see kids playing pickup games and it's a mixture of older and younger, that street football uh, culture um, mm-hmm. in a country where, okay, maybe it's a little bit safer on the streets because everyone's Croatian or predominantly Croatian, or there are some Nepalese and Indian migrations uh, in Zagreb, as we noticed. Um, but I think maybe that plays a, a big part in their, in their, you know, that toughness that they sort of develop at an early age. It's not all structured academy, um, you know, football on a beautiful pitch. Like the pitches we played on were, were fine, but they wouldn't be, you know, out, outstanding MPL junior style setups that we yeah. see, you know, week in, week out. The kids battle on average pitches, good pitches, and they can play on anything. And I think that adaptability is very important for them if they're going to, you know, forge a career as a professional where it's not always roses, Yeah. Yeah. Josip, while we've got you, I was going to say, sorry, Peter, did you want to say something? No, I just wanted to add a little bit too. There's, you know, we got to watch a lot of Champions League games at, at normal hours where kids are watching. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a good so, point. so much football to watch. It's, you know, it's a no brainer. And, and like Josip said, wherever we toured around Croatia and drove around, every corner there was, there was a field, not even, there, was, there wouldn't even be a soccer field. There'd just be, you know, a setup of boys playing on the road. Um, and and that yeah that that's a big part because boys you know the boys learn a lot just by by watching games too you know back home here right. we get up at all hours of the morning to watch a Champions League game but over there it's you know at a, at a normal hour and they probably don't have to have ten different subscriptions to different things as well right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to watch that's football true. is just too hard. <laughs> well, that's true. Well, you get up in the middle of the night to watch Heidel as we did this morning, and then you're gone for the rest of the day. Thank God it's um, school holidays, but uh, yeah. Now, um, Josip, you as a, as a young man, you actually had the experience of going to Croatia to play in the then Kvarnerska Riviera tournament with uh, with Melbourne Knights, Melbourne Croatia as a player. So in in much the same way that these boys now are experiencing, you had that experience. Cast your mind back, you know, it was only about 10 years ago, wasn't it? Um, Oh, mate, 23 (laughs) years ago. Actually, that was the last time I was in Croatia. So it was uh, was quite emotional for me to return. Tell tell me what effect did that have on you, both as a person, but also as a footballer at a Croatian club, to, to go to Croatia and represent the Australian Croatian community. Because from memory, it was like a half Melbourne Croatia, half Sydney Croatia team, was it back then? Yeah. yeah. What, what sort of effect did that have on you? Yeah, St Albans did more in North Geelong as well from here. And I believe uh, Stan Zilic, if you remember him from Adelaide, Croatia. Mm-hmm. We had a, quite a strong squad. Actually, Peter's, um, the, Mila Jedinak was the youngest and the, and the most successful guy to come out of that squad um, that went with us to that tournament. Um yeah, memories for a lifetime. The, the funny thing is I bumped into Peter's cool Tommy, who's uh, Ordolovic, who played with me in that tournament. I hadn't seen him since the tournament. So 23 years have passed oh, and we bump into each other at the airport when he comes to, to see Pete there. So 
um, you know, you, you build these sort of connections. We were there for a month. We played, I think it was 20 matches in 30 days. Um, you know, we, we beat Dinamo in the group stage and they weren't quite happy with that. Then we lost to Hayduk in the semi. So we had a very decent squad and a lot of guys that played higher level NSL, you know, your Anton Kovacic's, your Anthony Pelicans, um, Tommy Miladovic played A-League as well from that group as well. So some really strong players, but as 16, 17, 18 year olds, some of them, it was the experience of a lifetime playing against Dario Serna, Nico Kranchar, uh, Mario Tsarevic, guys that went on to have great careers. Wow. And, yeah. And I'll never forget it. I'm lucky one of the boys, Steve Pavlovich's dad, converted the um, the VHS footage onto DVDs for us. So we've still got that to look back on and see how we used to be as <laughs> as young, lean footballers. Um, but I think I think these boys got a real taste of that as well, even travelling through Vukovar and seeing some of the, the you know, the historical landmarks there and, and all of the, you know, all of the emotions that come with that was really important for these young boys to see. There's some of the photos you got there. Um yeah, I think, I know, Pete, you, you sort of travelled with United to play um, in Singapore and China and stuff, but I don't know if you managed to get to Crow and play there when you were younger. Yeah, no, I didn't get... I, I, I could have gone on that trip, but um, my parents just couldn't fund it at the time, which I was, I was gutted about. But, you, you know, you, you respect that because, you know, it, it wasn't easy easy back then. But, um, yeah, hearing the stories um, from, from a lot of the boys who I played with, and and how successful they they were um was was really rewarding you know as as a teammate is you, you want to see everyone succeed and, and hearing these stories was just just uh really really heartwarming i, I guess to to go play in croatia there's no better feeling than that you know every time you arrive in the country it's you just feel at home and and uh to compete in a tournament just yeah that's just cream of the crop i guess yeah, um, gents, um, look, it's, we could talk about this, and, and we certainly will, I'm sure, um, but it's, it's great to see that this looks like it's going to be an, an annual event, and you both, uh, I know, Petar, you've said that you're, you're definitely keen. Josip, are you, you definitely on board next year if, uh, if the powers that be come knocking on your door? <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I'll just look, to reiterate one point as well, Peter's got two young kids. I've got three young kids. Um, Pave Yusuf was with us. He's got four young kids. Um, and, and Simon Pinchich as well, three young kids. So between us, there was 12, 12 little kids that we left back in Australia with uh, very understanding wives. But it would be an honour to be part of it again. And for, like I'll just use this time as well to thank Pave and Shime personally and Yuri Dragovic, but those two in particular, um, you know, gave me the opportunity to come and help them um, and work with these young boys and, and work with Peter, which was a privilege, you know, legend of Sydney United and, and just so passionate about youth football. Um, I'd love to be a part of it in the future and, and hopefully, you know, do it even bigger and better where we spend some more time with the kids. And we've already sort of spoken about how to do it where we could maybe meet in Albury and do a little training camp here with the boys before we go. And, you know, there, there, there are ways to do this better and give kids um, every opportunity to be seen by, by the powers that be in a country that we know produces, you know, top-class players annually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, Albury, it could be something like, uh, you know, Camp Bonagilla, like our Croatian <laughs> forefathers came in the 60s and 70s and set up camp there. And But there is a very good Croatian sure. club up there and a good Croatian community up there on the border. But, uh, yeah, look, um, one thing that I was speaking to that mentioned, that Jura Dragovic mentioned today, gents, is that um, I think the American Croatian select team has been now for two, three years there. The Germans have been for 15 years or whatever. So, for being our first year there, and um, I think w there was a photo there that we might have actually, actually you might have seen if I can bring that photo up. Um, wasn't that one, was it? No, it was this one, I think, where there's Jure Dragovic on the far right, and he's got the fair play trophy or fair, um, that, that um, the Australian Croats select team one. So that must have been a real honour, but obviously it's probably a little bit symbolic being there at the tournament the first time. But nonetheless... Um, that must have been a real, you know, heartwarming thing for you guys as well to get that recognition. Peter? Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of locals and, and other other uh, other dysphoria clubs come up to us and, and you know, willy-nilly asking us about pulks and koalas and kangaroos. <laughs> and we said, yeah, we've got them in our backyard and all that. But... Um, it was it, it was brilliant because you know we all stayed in the same hotel. Um, we got to exchange a lot of words and, and details and contacts, which you know we we hope to to build 
relationships with them as well. You never know, you know, there, there could be an opportunity for a service to, le to select a team or, or someone to even travel to one of their, you know, annual Croatian tournaments that we host here um, in Australia. But look, it, it, it was heartwarming. It was it was good to see us in, in such big numbers and, you know, to, to hear their stories and, and their upbringings in, in uh, foreign foreign countries and, and leaving Croatia to for better lives and whatever, it, we still call Croatia Hrvatska home. Yeah. Uh, but, so we're all on par. We're all on the same page. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, overall, it, it, it was pleasing. It was pleasing to uh, meet these people. Yeah, yeah it must it have been great, great for the children to uh, play against the local or play train with the local clubs as well. That must have been a massive thrill as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, like I, like I mentioned, there was a few boys um, that, that had arrived early in Croatia and we organised training with Osijek and then after the tournament, dinner more for those who stayed. And there's uh, quite a few that are still there who are now training with uh, other local clubs um, just to, just to you know, get a feel for it all and, and that. And, and everyone's been welcoming. Um, you know, it's, it's been fantastic and, and a real eye-opener for these boys. Now, do you, you think oh, ideally in future, you know, it would be more beneficial to be a bit longer and maybe the boys play a few more matches over there? Do you mm. think that would be Definitely. better, particularly for us being yeah, such a big trip? For sure. Like you also mentioned back 23 years ago, they, they played 20 odd games and, you know, they, they, they stayed there a lot longer. Um, look, it, it, it comes down to commitments and, you know, and who the coaches are and how long we can get, get away from our young families and and all that sort of stuff it's yeah it's there's a lot of planning to do but you know in saying that we 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 know what's at stake and and we know what what works so um that's something for us now to go back and put pieces to the puzzle as what what works and what doesn't and and how to do things better yeah, I was going to say, Josip, uh, we've now got a, a, an even stronger strain Croatian link with Croatian football with the news over the last few days that uh, Canberra-born Josip Šimunić is now the president of NK Rudeš there in Zagreb. That's 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 an amazing feat. Now, he's very, very much polarises the, the Croatian football community in Croatia, Josip Šimunić. But for, 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 for us, that, that is probably even a... a a strong, tangible link that, once again, now Rudes could become, I'm not saying it will, but it could become a destination for, for Australian Croatians wanting to go overseas because they've got a very, very good youth setup, haven't they? They do, and they're, they're flying high in high in L2. Um, but I don't think Josip polarises anyone. Anyone that knows Josip knows that he's a gentleman. Um, you know, we had the, the privilege of going to dinner with him and Stipe Pletikosa and yeah. Um, Boris Kubler, who's the head of coach education, who Peter and I have spoken about doing UEFA badges through them as well and, you know, improving our knowledge so we can bring back to our kids here. But, look, I think it, yeah, absolutely only strengthens the pathways for kids. It gives more opportunities. Um, and like Peter was saying, if they're involved in Croatian clubs, that's a big uh, carrot to dangle in front of them uh, in regards to their future because, you know, it's hard to make it even here in an A-League Academy junior team to get into the first team. It's very difficult. Sometimes people appreciate different flavours and types of players in a different environment because the Croatian culture is with the ball, yeah? Technical players that like to yeah. yeah. Australia is a little bit more multicultural. Some coaches like, you know, strong, direct, fast players. Some won't have space for a technical player and he'll just be phased out. Look at young Skork or doing well in Hayduk where, you know, maybe here the, the doors weren't as open to him. So it's, you know what, the more opportunities kids have, they can find their right home and their right pathway and then hopefully the right coaches to guide them and help them develop and hopefully you produce another player like a Shimonich that you know goes and plays 100 odd caps for the national team and has an unbelievable career and keeps giving back to the game the minister of yeah. defense 105 games an absolute legend when i say polarizes i think it's the, the croatians over there it's either you're a Hayduk fan or a dinamo fan uh, it's, oh, that's just croatians being croatians there's an old joke you get two croatians in the room and they all they will form three political parties <laughs> but on that note, on that note, gents, um, this is one 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 thing that certainly unified Croatians here in Australia, brought the Croatians of New South Wales and Victoria together, and certainly we hope there's going to be a lot lot more initiatives um, like this in the future. So thank you both to you to to your respective wives as well. A big shout out to your <laughs> respective wives for letting these gentlemen go for two weeks on the other side of the world. 
And, um, yeah, you guys have, I think, made such a difference to a lot of uh, young Australian-Croatian um, boys' lives, that's for sure. Keep Thanks, up the great Jeff. work. Good on you, guys. Um, Josip Lončaric and um, Petar Markovic joining us live on the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Um, one of the best initiatives, certainly, to come out of uh, the Croatian football community here in Australia in the last few years. And I'm sure there's going to be even more um, in, 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 in weeks, months, years to come, aren't there? But, uh, yeah, that's great news to hear that this this under-14 boys select um, squad is set to be an annual thing, That's and that's fantastic. Oh, brilliant. Something to look forward to, something to, for the players Absolutely. and both parents and the coaches to look forward to and, and strengthening those um, networks and everything else, you know, and who knows who can be spotted. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, um, you know, we get a lot more players of great quality um, from this and, uh, you know, that will benefit um, us here in Australia and benefit overseas as well. Yeah, absolutely. Now, look, um, we've got Slavicek Studio Architecture is a great sponsor of the um, of the show. We've also got a, a, a hairdressing salon from Melbourne that is about to start sponsoring us as well. So we thank all, um, those two organisations, those two businesses. But if your club would like to sponsor an upcoming episode of the Ozcrow Soccer Show, contact contact us now by emailing ozcrowsoccershow at gmail.com or calling us on 0402 012 um, you know, we, we would love to feature your club and there's only a small cost involved, but it um, helps us run this program. Uh, now, before we do go, um, do go to all you New South Welshmen and Welsh women out there. Um, if you're in the Sydney area tomorrow night around the um, Sydney United Sports Centre, kick off at 7.30 p.m. for the big Australia Cup clash between Sydney United and East Sydney Hakoa. Um, Auntie will be there. You can go up to Auntie and say, "How are you? You're doing a good job," or, or, or otherwise, no, he's doing a great job. Can I just say a big quick shout out? Sorry, I was dead to say happy 20th birthday to my cool man, look, uh, Josip Dotto today. So uh, happy birthday, and I'm the Briscola champion. Okay, so, <laughs> there you go. Well done, Josip. Happy 20th birthday. Good on you guys. On that note, thank you so much for jo joining us tonight and being a part of this show. Hey, you can do your bit to sell um, to, to, to promote this show. And tonight's episode was really a good one because it had a very, very, very good message for um, any young Australian Croatian, anyone for that matter, who plays football and dreams and aspires of one day going to Europe. Share it. Share it on your social media pages, on your Facebook, your Twitter, your YouTube, your LinkedIn, whatever, Snapchat, TikTok. Or whatever, what else is in the Instagram? Oh my God, you need to have a degree to get your head around all of these social media platforms and channels. Post it, repost it, get as many people listening, watching. Um, we're even now on Spotify, so um, and uh, Google Play uh, Podcasts, so you can even listen to it on your way to work tomorrow. But um, yeah, spread the word and let's get as many people. Um, watching and listening to the Ozcrow Soccer Show because each week we're going to try and give you some of the best guests that the Australian Croatian football community can offer. And I, we are we're going to try and get Josip Šimunić, the new president of Croatian second division outfit, soon to be Croatian first division outfit, and Rudes. On that note, have a great, great, great um, week. We look forward to your company next week at the old time. And the old day time slot of Wednesday, 8 p.m. Ante, good night. Like with Norch, and uh, Norch. we'll see you next Wednesday. Fala Puno. Bye bye. <laughs>